It's a beautiful day in Cota de Casa, and today we're going to explore our Coast Live Oak. So let's give it a go. This is our Coast Live Oak. It is not only the signature tree of Cota de Casa, but it also directly or indirectly supports about half of all the animals that live in Cota. Everything from the little insects to the critters that eat the insects, to the critters that eat the critters, to the birds, all the way up to our big mountain lions. So let's go inside the gates of Kodo and see what we can find out about our coast to live oak. We're headed up Kodo the Casa Drive on our way to the oak grove. These are all coast live oaks. They're very beautifully manicured. They don't look like this in real life. Hey, I'm on the north end of Cota de Casa by Vista del Verde. And this is what I call our oak woodland grove. And this here is Gobernadora Creek which is named after La Cañada de la Gobernadora. And most of our oaks start just on the other side where they start to get more dense. And they follow the creek all the way down here. And this creek extends another five miles as it meanders through the north course, the south course, the residence down by South Bend, and finally exits in Gobernadora Basin. And these oaks, they love living by this creek. All these oaks. There's a great source of water when it rains and there's water in the creek. And also the mud soil here is excellent at retaining water throughout the year, even if it never rains. So they pretty much thrive in this community. And they've been here for hundreds of years, thousands of years. And some of our trees, I believe, are even in the excess of 200 years old themselves. But we'll discover that a little bit later. But right now, let's, uh, let's meet some of our trees in our oak grove. Now the tree goes by the Latin name Quercus agrifolia. And he lives as far south as Baja California and all the way up to Fort Bragg in Mendocino County. Now this tree, he gets his name, Coast Live Oak, because the word coast, he is the only of our 20 native oaks that can survive along the coast. He gets the name Live because he's evergreen, so he's green all year. And he gets the name Oak, of course, because he provides acorns. So let's get a closer look. Our coast live oak, it starts out looking like a little shrub and then develops into a little tree. Not only has one stem or one trunk that's connected to a taproot that extends quite far underground to provide it all the strength and the nutrients to grow into a larger tree like this one here. And when it gets to a certain height, the tree starts to branch out farther and it also starts to send out lateral roots, which are about 18 inches underground, and those lateral roots will extend out radially from all the different sections of the trunk. And here's a larger tree. As it grows larger and the branches expand out even farther, it'll start to lose its taproot and it extends out roots that'll come out as far as, well, it starts at the tree. It'll end at the drip line here. It's called the drip line and extend about another 30%. So you'll come to about here. So where I stand would be pretty much the distance of the roots from the base of the tree to where I am right here. So the problem is if you build a road here, you'll pretty much suffocate the roots and then eventually suffocate the tree. 
So it's real important to make sure you have a lot of distance between any structures or any roadways or hard surfaces between the trunk and the end of its lateral root. These oaks typically live 40 to 110 years. Some have been known to live longer than 250 years with trunks in diameter up to 15 feet. Now the oldest living coast live oak is the Pachanga Great Oak Tree out in Temecula Indian Country. It is more than 2,000 years old. It's not open to the public, so to see it, you have to have a reservation. So let's take a look at our leaves. These are the outer leaves, they're called sun leaves. They're dark green, they have a wax coating, and they're convex. And this structure allows for the maximum solar absorption while having the minimum amount of water loss. So what happens is the sun directly hits this convex shape here and it reflects. So it doesn't uh, overheat the leaf and dry it out. It also has three layers of chlorophyll on the top half. So that really helps with the um, energy buildup and you know the, the mechanics with inside the cells themselves of this leaf. So it's a wonderful tree. Um, the leaves are uh, a little serrated or toothed on the edges. Now these um, outer leaves also help reflect the light to the inner leaves inside the tree. So let's take a look at one of the inner leaves. Here are some of the leaves in the inner canopy, and you notice that they're, um, they're actually very flat. They look the same, they're very flat, they're still waxy, they're still nice and soft on the underside, but the reason um, they don't have to be round is they don't have to reflect the sun, and they're protected by the outer, what's called sun leaves. And what happens here is the outer sun leaves, because of their structure, they're able to reflect the sunlight to the inner leaves, where the inner leaves can then absorb the sun, even though they're being shaded up above by all the branches and leaves of the same tree. So that's a nice little factoid to know about. Now a mature tree reaches a maximum height between 35 feet and 80 feet. And trees between 20 and 70 years are primarily roundish in shape, very dense leaves, and broader than they are high. And the older trees have more well-defined branches and much less leaf density. Now these trees are all rather manicured, so you don't have that roundish shape as much as a non-manicured tree. And this one here is quite tall. So of course, we expect it is quite old. So let's see if we could find out how old it is. To find out how old this tree is, we find the diameter and then we multiply it by its age growth factor. So I already measured the circumference at about four feet up the, up the uh, trunk of the tree and circumference is 73. You divide that by pi, which is 3.14, you get 23. And the age growth factor for this type of tree is five. So 23 times five is 115. So this tree is about 115 years old. How about that? Now the tree was, it would have been much broader out here, much broader out here. Um, but we do landscape these and we cut them back pretty good. So, 115 years, not bad. So I measured another tree, and um, this is upside down, but it's 102 inches in circumference. If we divide that circumference by pi, or 3.14, 102, we'll probably get about, let's say 35, and you multiply 35 by five, and you'll get 165. So this tree, you could tell, 
is much more branched out, much more robust than the other tree. And this guy is probably 150, you have to give or take a little bit. This is a rather crude method. So these are pretty nice old trees in our oak grove up in North Dakota of the Casa. So now we are in late May. So the flowers have pretty much done their thing. These are the flowers of the Coast Live Oak. And they've, um, they're kind of withering away. They've pretty much done their thing. And they'll start to grow the acorns, which won't be ready until about January. Now, in January, all the birds will come, like the, um, the scrub jays and the acorn woodpeckers, and they'll pull the acorns off, and this is, um, they'll pull them out of these little cups. I call it a cup. I'm not sure what the scientific name is. But this is um, the cup that holds the acorn, and then they'll go do their thing with the acorn. I'll kind of show you what they do later on. Here's another cup. Unfortunately, there's no more acorns left because they've been picked dry. Here's where many of the acorns end up. The acorn woodpeckers store them in this tree, and this tree is called a granary. And as the acorns shrivel up a little bit, they'll take it and they will put it into perhaps a different hole that might be more suitable for that size of an acorn. And this tree is literally littered with thousands and thousands of acorns. I mean, it goes all the way up to the top. So that was pretty fun and I sure learned a lot about our Coast Live Oak and what a wonderful tree this is and how it supports, like I said, over half of the animals within our beautiful oak woodland community of Coto de Casa. Have a great day. Bye.